the Johnson Wax Program. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly. Incident number 256, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Get the Moon Out of Your Eyes. <laughs> It's hard to realize that we're already into the month of October, the tenth month of the year. It's a glorious month, full of wonderful colors, and a good month to talk about how to care for your linoleum floors. How can you keep the colors of your linoleum bright and sparkling? How can you make the linoleum itself last longer? Well, here's how. With Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, used with great satisfaction in many thousands of homes from Montreal to Mexico. Ever since glow coat was introduced a few years ago, its popularity has increased steadily. It makes floors gleam with beauty, gives a long-lasting polish that's easy to maintain, protects linoleum and other floor surfaces against wear, does all these things at low cost and with practically no work. Glow Coat is self-polishing. It takes no rubbing or buffing. Simply apply and let dry, and in 20 minutes, your floor is like new. Be sure Johnson's Glow Coat is on your next shopping list. <laughs> Maybe it's the old Johnson wax feeling for snappy appearances. Or maybe it's just years of perfect radio timing. Or again, maybe just a coincidence. But just as we open their show tonight, who should be driving up in front of 79 Wistful Vista, home from their vacation, but Fibber McGee and Molly? <laughs> Gotta get them brakes fixed. Uh, home again. Well, help me unload these bags and stuff, Molly. All right, dearie. But what on earth is this in the greasy paper bag? Huh? Oh, that's the rest of that T-bone steak I had at that roadhouse this noon. I couldn't finish it, so I brung it home for the dog. <laughs> we haven't got a dog. Huh. Well, I'll bury it till we get one. Oh, there, folks. Welcome home. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hi, Throckmorton, old man. Certainly is good to see the old faces again. Yes. <laughs> And if mine was as old as yours, I'd trade it in. <laughs> <laughs> Same old fibber, isn't he, Mrs. McGee? Oh, dear, is he? <laughs> <laughs> well, how's everything been, Rocky old pal? You've been keeping an eye on our house for us, like you promised? Ah, uh, yes, indeed I have, McGee. I think you'll find everything in fine shape, except for the umbrella stand in the hall. It, that got broken. Oh, yeah? Uh, how'd it get busted, Gildersleeve? Well, I think the carpenters must have done it when they were rehanging the dining room door. What? Huh? Rehanging the dining room door, but what? An oh, earth? that's right. You wouldn't know about that, would you? Yes, the dining room door fell off when the floor gave way. Hey, what are you talking about? What floor gave way? Why, the dining room floor, of course. What? You couldn't expect any flooring to hold all that water without something happening. The wall of hot water. Why, the water that came through the dining room ceiling from the bathroom upstairs. From the bathroom. <laughs> what was the idea of leaving the water running in the bathroom, McGee? So it'd be hot when you came home. <laughs> <laughs> A fine homecoming. I know, knew I shouldn't have ought to trusted you to look after them there things like that there, Gildersleeve. Of all the careless, slipshod, ignorant, lackadaisy chain imps... You're a hard man, McGee. <laughs> oh, boys, boys, stop it. You mustn't start quarreling the very minute we get home. Or must you? Well, no, it ain't, it ain't compulsory, I guess. I should say not. Oh. Might at least wait till tomorrow. <laughs> what time, Gildersleeve? About 10.30. Make it 11. We had a long drive, and I'm tired. <laughs> well, come on, Molly. we better start unloading this stuff. Fine. I'll take these boxes and the bag of laundry, and you bring No, no, them. no. You folks must be just about worn out. Let me carry that stuff in for you. What? Now, give me that steamer trunk. That's it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be back for another load in a moment, folks. <laughs> well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. On your mother's side or your father's side? <laughs> 
on my father. Huh? Oh. Uh. Isn't Mr. Gildersleeve nice? He has a heart as big as all outdoors. Yeah, and it can get just as windy and cold, too. <laughs> Now, let's see. I guess I left my fishing tackle in the trunk compartment. Well, hello there, Fibber. Hello, Molly. Welcome home. Mr. Wilcox, how nice. Uh, what's the name, bud? Oh, oh hi, Harlow. Gee, yeah, I'm glad to see you. <laughs> well, say, by the looks of your car, you've certainly been places. Look at that dust. Tell you what you better do. Get a can of Johnson's car on you okay, and... Okay, okay, okay. Call off your dog. <laughs> we know the car's dirty, and we know what to do about it, too. Now, let's go on from there. Friendly and non-commercial. <laughs> All right. Can I help you unload that luggage? No, thank you. Mr. Gildersleeve is helping us. Yeah. Besides, we don't want you to see the present we brung you before we're ready. <laughs> oh, you'll love it, Harlow. Gee, well, what is it? Oh, oh, now, don't be impatient. You drop by later and we'll give it to yeah. you. Yeah. All right. And if there's anything I can do, just give me a ring. Ah, good old Harlow. Say, hey, incidentally, what did we bring him, McGee? Oh, I don't know. We'll find something. <laughs> How about that sewing basket with the beads on it we bought from the Indians in Walla Walla? Well, it'll have to be clean first. Huh? You carried your bait in it for two weeks. <laughs> That's all I did carry in it, too. <laughs> well, folks, I carried that steamer trunk right up to your room. Now, give me another load. I won't be satisfied like I get every bag out of that car. Now, let McGee help you. Yeah, I'll be glad. No, 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 I'll get this big box. And McGee, you hoist that outboard motor up on my shoulder. Oh. Better, straight, uh, better straighten the rudder on him, McGee, or you'll have him going around the block. <laughs> That's very good, Mrs. McGee. I thought it was pretty good to sell. <laughs> I'll be back for another load in a moment. What's got into that guy, anyway? <laughs> He's working like a beaver. Except his tail ain't so flat. <laughs> well, it will be by the time he lugs in a couple of more trunks. Now, stop criticizing a helpful neighbor and get to work. Please. Okay, okay. Now, let's see. There's my fishing... Oh, look, McGee. Huh? Here comes the little girl from across the street. <laughs> hey, what's she looking so haughty about? Hi there, sis. Oh, how do you do? <laughs> hey, come back here a minute. Hey, sis. Hmm? Were you addressing me, sis? Hey, what are you getting so high hat about? Well, gee, it was my thought that... Inasmuch as our business relationship had more or less culminated, there was no further point in assuming a false hardiness upon a casual contact with my former employer, I bet you. <laughs> Your former employers? Mm -hmm. You ain't leaving our show, are you? Well, I've had some very good offers. Oh. And when you've been in show business as long as I have, Chief. <laughs> okay, okay. So who's been making you offers? My agent told me not to tell her that you. Oh, who's your agent, little girl? Well, he too. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't talk to him now on account of he had to go to bed early on account of he broke a window with his football on account of a belief. He broke a window on account of a belief? Sure. He believed he could kick it clear over the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Hmm? I said, I see. Well, don't expect any credit for it. It was pretty obvious. <laughs> okay, sis, okay. Anyway, I wish you a lot of luck with your new show, whatever it is, and I hope you'll always think well of old Fibber and old Molly. Let me out of this. Huh? Oh. <laughs> yeah, we've had a lot of fun together, haven't we? Yes, we have, sis, but whatever you do, we wish you well. But if I was you, I'd talk it over with your mother. With who, mister? Your mother. My mother? Yes, yes, your mother. Who is it that you can always depend on to tell you a story at bedtime? Who sings to you and makes you laugh and makes you brush your teeth every night? Oh, Bob Hope. <laughs> well, so on, I'll see you next week. <laughs> right, kid. I think a smart youngster like that really deserves a pat on the back. <laughs> With a hairbrush. <laughs> uh, the little pup, she did... Oh, hi, Gildersleeve. Much obliged for helping. A couple more trips and you ought to be about through, huh? Yes, McGee. <laughs> But as I said, I won't be happy till I get every bag out of that car. Mm -hmm. Well, there's only one more bag left, Mr. Gildersleeve. The Gladstone. You bring that, McGee. Okay, Molly. I'll oh, no, you don't, McGee. I'll take that. Oh, come, come, Trotty. You've done enough. You think I have? Well, watch this. Hey, oh, hey, what hey watch what you're doing there. You're spilling everything out on the sidewalk. That's what you get for putting my bag on the bottom of the pile. Huh? When you borrowed it last summer, you didn't tell me you'd be gone 13 weeks. My wife has been wanting to go away on a visit for two months. Well, and now maybe she won't even go. You see what you've done, McGee?
dearie. Put in the car in the garage. Why? Well, I've emptied everything out of the bags and suitcases, and I can't find your purple sweater. Where do you suppose it is? Who searched me? Oh, I remember. It was took by a moose. <laughs> Anybody that'd take that sweater's no moose. He's an odd fella. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this was a real moose, honest. Remember the night you spent with your Aunt Hattie up in Winnipeg and I stayed in the tourist camp? Yeah. Well, when I went to bed that night, here was that moose with his head stuck through the window. Yeah. I didn't know it was a real moose. I thought it was just a moose's head mounted. Oh. So I hung all my clothes on it. What? <laughs> he got away with my orange and blue necktie and my green slacks, too. <laughs> Pretty snappy outfit for a moose. He ought to do all right in the mating season. <laughs> I sure hated to lose that sweater. Anything else missing? Well, I haven't checked everything yet. Why? Oh, I don't know. I still got the feeling we forgot something fairly important. Well, too. don't worry about it, dearie. It'll probably show up sooner or later. Now, let me see. Here's my beach shoes. Oh. Come in. Little McGee and Molly? Yeah? Who's sponsoring you this year? Same people, bud. Johnson's Wax. Didn't they sponsor you last year? For the last five years, in fact. Who are you going to work for the next year, may I ask? Johnson's Wax. For the next five years. Ten years with one outfit. And they call this a variety program. It's reprehensible. <laughs> Fresh guy, what does he expect us to do? Change sponsors as often as we change our jokes? Quit, keep on talking. You left yourself wide open. <laughs> Let's go over these souvenirs and gifts, Molly, and see what we're going to give to whom. All right, I put them all over here on this end table. Let's see what we got. There's that snakeskin hat band. And the abalone shell table lamp. <clears throat> little Indian squaw doll holding the paprika. Papoose. <laughs> Papoose is what they hit you on the end of a freight train. No, that's a caboodle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, then what's a paprika? Red pepper. I gotta say is that's a heck of a name for an Indian baby. Red pepper. <laughs> of all the dumb... Ah, old home week. <laughs> if they pound on that door as often as they did last year, it'll make the old home week all right. <laughs> Come in. Oh, there, my dears. Welcome. Oh, uh, <laughs> Mrs. Uppington, how nice. And Billy Mills. Hi, Uppy. Hi, Billy. Hello, kid. I sure am glad to see you back. Getting lonesome, Mr. Mills? Nope. Getting broke, baby. <laughs> well, I, I should like to have had a vacation myself, but what with my rumba lessons? Well, you know? vacations are what? What'd you say? Rumba lessons? Heavenly days, imagine. Well, really, I don't see why you're so surprised. Simply everyone is rumbaing, you know. I think up, William. That's right, Snooky. If you don't rumba, you're a little behind. Oh. And if you do... <laughs> Oh, but really, Mrs. McGee, you must take it up. It's simply fascinating. It's so exhilarating. Oh, yes, I've just finished my fifth lesson with Madame Lozonga. <laughs> and next week I'm to give an exhibition at the country club. Oh, you must come. Oh, I wouldn't miss that for all the tea in Panama. Uh, no, you mean China. We can't say China. It's controversial. <laughs> We'll be there the night you make the exhibition of yourself. I mean, the night you put on the exhibition of it. <laughs> Somehow I can't picture you as a rumba dancer, Mrs. Uppington. Well, really, and why not, my dear? Oh, I don't know. You always seem more the type to spend an evening with the mazurka. <laughs> yeah, mazurka tonight and shoddish at sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come now. One must be more receptive to new ideas, or one becomes stoogey. That's stodgy. Not on this show. <laughs> now, here, uh, let me show you how the rumba is done. Uh, William, uh, the piano. Yeah, I saw it. Ain't it a dilly? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, play, William, a rumba. I wish to show Mr. and Mrs. McGee how simple it is. Oh, never mind. And a one, and a two. <laughs> You sure tripped the light. Fantastic. 
McGee, she couldn't help it. Oh, I know it. And just to show you there's no hard feelings, Uppy, come on, get up and come over here to the stand table and select a souvenir of our trip. <laughs> See, how about that little hunk of petrified wood, Mrs. Upton? Yeah, that snakeskin hat band. Oh, now, really, I, I hardly know what to select. All these things are so uh, unusual, you know. <laughs> uh, William, come here and help me decide. What shall I take? You want my candid opinion, Stucky? Yes, of course. Take the end table. <laughs> <laughs> Why, that's so splendid. <laughs> yes, indeed, I will. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. and Mrs. McGee, and I do hope I'll see you at the country club. Come, William. <laughs> well, I'm glad I didn't put those things on the piano. <laughs> I can't get over old Uppy doing that rumba. Mm -hmm. Now what? I got that feeling again. What feeling? That we forgot something. You sure all my fishing tackle was unpacked? Because I'm positive. Hey, that... where's my present? What you mean, where's your present? Is that any way to come busting in here when we ain't hardly unpacked yet? Well, gee whiz, you promised. Let me see it. Come on. Oh, all right, big baby. Here it is. How do you like it, Harlow? What is it? <laughs> well, you see, Mr. Wilcox, you put that little flower in your buttonhole, and the bulb has water in it. And when somebody smells of the flower, you squeeze the bulb and squirt them in the eye. <laughs> oh, I see. I kind of envy you, Harlow. You can have a lot of fun with that. Yeah, I'll be a social panic with this. <laughs> you know, it reminds me of a magic plate lifter I had once. Yeah. You know, you put it under the tablecloth, squeeze a bulb, and somebody's plate jumps up and down. Ha, <laughs> ha! Boy, was I a card. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to have one of them. You still got it, Harlow? No, no. Johnson's wax just about ruined that gag. What's that? Yeah. When people began to realize what beauty there was in a dining room table polished with Johnson's wax, and how easy it was to keep it looking beautiful, to say nothing of protecting the surface from scratches and stains, well, a lot of them just quit using tablecloths. Oh. Gee, sometimes there'd be weeks go by before I had a chance to use my magic plate lifter. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty tough, Harlow, but you can't stop progress. No, I guess not. Well, did you have a nice trip? Oh, wonderful, Mr. Wilcox. I don't know who enjoyed it the most. McGee or me or the old-timer. The old-timer? Was he with you? Oh, yes. sure he was. <laughs> he was more fun than a barrel of monkeys, too. At least we think he was. Yeah. Next trip we make, we're taking a barrel of monkeys instead. <laughs> <laughs> this person <for contest>. has. <laughs> Well, did you catch any fish, Fibber? Or are you a fisherman? Am I a fisherman? <laughs> you hear that, Molly? Am I a fisherman? Well, we're both waiting for the answer, dearie. <laughs> even when I was a little tyke, I could catch more fish than anybody in town. Well, I caught so many catfish, they even nicknamed me after them. Oh. I think. Bullhead McGee, I was known as an Oh, my. Bullhead McGee, the blue-eyed, brown-haired, barefoot boy, bravely bouncing on the bosom of the briny in a battered boat to bring in bountiful batches of black bass and bluegills for breakfast. Best barracuda battler that ever braced a back on a bulkhead to be labor the big babies that bite the bait and bend the bamboo till it's about to bust. <laughs> Barging back to the beach with a burst bursting basket of breathtaking beauties from the bottom of the bay and boasted about in the best boat houses as the brightest boat of brains and brawn that I say, King's men, can you carry on? <laughs> The King's Men sing The House That Jack Built. This is the house that Jack built. This is the malt. Oh, this is the malt. That lay in the house that Jack built. This is the rat that ate the malt. That lay in the house that Jack built. This is the cat that killed the rat that ate the malt. That lay in the house that Jack built. This is the dog that worried the cat that killed the rat, killed the rat that ate the malt that lay in the house that Jack built. This is the cow with the crumpled horn that tossed the dog that worried the cat that killed the rat that ate the malt that lay in the house that Jack built. This is a maiden all forlorn, and this is the man all tattered and torn, and this is all shaven and shorn That married a man To the maiden forlorn This is the rooster crowed In the early morn 
make the priest all shaven and shorn. That married the poor young man all tattered and torn. The man who kissed the pretty maiden so forlorn. The maid who milked the cow with the crumpled horn. The cow that tossed the dog that worried the cat that killed the rat that ate the malt in the house that Jack built. This is the farmer sowing his corn that kept the cock that crowed in the morn. That wake the priest all shaven and shorn and marry the man. I'm tattered and torn that kissed the maid and all forlorn that milked the cow with a crump of horn that tossed the dog that worried the cat that killed the rat that ate the malt that lay in the house and jack. Hey, Molly, yeah, give me a pencil and paper. What for, dearie? I'm going to write a list of everything we took with us and check it against what we brung back. I know we left something someplace, and I can't for the life of me remember just... Oh, hello, Mr. DePopolis. Well, for scream's sake, visit and cutie. Yeah. Oh. Welcome home again, as I live and breathe the best I can with this hay fever. <laughs> well, thanks, Nick. Glad to see you. My goodness gracious. It must have been a wonderful thing to be driving all over the Western Hemisphere and doing all that... <laughs> Seat sign. No, you mean sightseeing. On a long trip, you can do both, I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm going to take Mrs. DePopolis and the kids on a long trip one of these days. Every night, my biggest boy, Demetrios, is bringing home a lot of road maps. Road maps? Road maps. He's in the street cleaning department. <laughs> but what was I saying before somebody is blowing the whistle on my train of thoughtfulness? <laughs> you want to take a trip sometime? Oh, yes. The only thing is, I think we'll have to ask you to take care of our cat. Oh, what kind of a cat is it? Uh, she's a miser. A miser? Your cat is a miser? Sure. Oh, she's a terrible little miser. How much money has she got? Oh, she hasn't got any money. She works for nothing. Works for nothing doing what? Catching mice. <laughs> you mean she's a mouser? Oh, I stand connected, Fizzer. <laughs> Well, I've got to get home now so I can hear Kay Kauser on the radio. No, that's Kay Kaiser. Miser, Mauser, Kaiser, Kauser. What difference is it making to anybody but a man or a mind? <laughs> Incidental floss, Fizzer. Huh? Where were you going on this? <laughs> For scream <scripture. laughs> Where were you going on this big vacation of yours? Up in the high Sierras, Mr. DePopolis. And believe me, you get some beautiful panoramas from some of those mountain peaks. Yes, I wouldn't be a bit... You get what? You get... <laughs> Some beautiful panoramas. Oh! <laughs> well, panoramas wouldn't be very appealing to me. Oh. I like the old-fashioned nightshirts. <laughs> <laughs> well, so long, Fizzer and Cupid. If you get a chance to drop down by my candy kitchen, why bother? <laughs> You know, I think it would do Mr. DePopolis good to take a motor trip with his family, McGee. Huh? By the way, how many children has he got? Well, how should I know? We've been away all summer. <laughs> Aunt Reddit, I wish I could remember what it was that we forgot. I won't sleep a wink till I remember oh, what that... Oh, now, stop worrying, dearie. Whatever it is, it'll show up sooner or later. Well... Say, I better call the grocery and order something for supper. Is the phone working? I don't know. I'll see. Hello, operator. Never mind. I just want... Oh, is that you, Mert? Uh, <laughs> heavenly day. How's every little thing, Mert? This, is, eh? Huh? Your old man. He what? Got shot in the leg. <laughs> oh. Honest, Mert? <laughs> oh, my goodness, I don't think getting shot in the leg is anything to laugh at, dearie. <laughs> no, you don't understand, Molly. He was loading some cartridges and got some shot down his pants leg. <laughs> Pretty near tickled him to death. <laughs> what say, Mert? Now what? Oh, she says she's got a long-distance call for us. Okay, Mert, put him on. Hello? Hello? Hello, was that you, Johnny? Oh, hi, old-timer. Where are you talking from? You know darn well where I am, Johnny. Huh? I'm in that filling station in Gold Beach, Oregon, where you drove away and left me. Oh, my gosh, Molly. I knew we forgot something. <laughs> Bibber and Molly will be back in just a moment. I'm very glad to tell you about a wonderful new Johnson product, a new and entirely different kind of enamel called wax enamel. 
If any of you ladies have in mind doing a little redecorating, repainting your woodwork, bathroom, or any pieces of furniture to give them new life and color, then please try wax enamel. Why is it different? Well, it actually has wax mixed right in it, so it dries with a beautiful, smooth, lustrous, wax-like finish. And because of this wax right in the enamel, wax enamel gives greater protection against scratches and marring, and is easier to keep spotless. It took years of research before Johnson Chemists perfected wax enamel, but it was worth waiting for. It comes in a wide assortment of smart colors selected by a prominent interior decorator. Wax enamel is economical because a little goes a long way and one coat almost always covers. See wax enamel at your hardware, paint, or department store. Remember, it's made by the makers of Johnson's Wax. Hey, you Fibber McGee and Molly? Yes, we are. I'm warning you. You better get out of here quick. Uh -huh. Why? They're following you right now. Huh? Who, 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 who's following us? Bob Hope and his mom. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox, reminding you that when you buy any one of the Johnson Wax products, you get your full money's worth in satisfaction. Be sure to ask your dealer for Johnson's self-polishing glow coat for your linoleum, Johnson's wax for your floors, furniture, and woodwork, and Johnson's car new for your car. All these superior products are manufactured by S.C. Johnson & Son, Incorporated, Racine, Wisconsin. Well, we hope you'll be with us again next Tuesday night, same time, same station. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.